If you scroll the depths of YouTube, you'll find video after video lamenting the death of games. Some discuss their favourite game disappearing into the abyss, others questioning the decision that led to a game's release, and one of them with a fancy jingle. Dead Games, D-E-A-D-G-A-M-E-S, Dead Games. All of these videos share stories of live service games that came and went. Some of them died out slowly over time, a noble death. Others imploded in on themselves, and some didn't even make it on launch day, dead on arrival. The story is the same over and over, video after video. We hear that most live service games die, few succeed, fewer still stand the test of time. But one game has caught my eye, a game that stands resolute, refuses to go down without a fight, with a small but dedicated fan base. It's a player number that most videos would say was a dead game. This game would sit proudly on the death of a game thumbnail from any YouTube channel, begging you to click on it to figure out what happened to this game, why did it die. But this game won't go away. It's slowing down an inevitable demise. And I have to tell you, I am hooked on this game. It's Vampire the Masquerade Blood Hunt. This vampiric enthused battle royale launched in April 22 to some decent reviews, as well as some YouTube and streamer hype. It had a lot of potential. A movement based battle royale with classes and a focus on traversal and gunplay. But like so many others that have tried to take a bite of the battle royale market, its hype was short lived. And one year after its launch, the developers announced the support for the game would stop, the servers would remain but no new content would be forthcoming. The development of Blood Hunt was over as of May 2023. It was now on life support. Its demise inevitable. But one year after that announcement, the summer of 2024, and something interesting is transpiring. A small but dedicated community has crystallized around Blood Hunt, logging in night after night to experience this game before it's too late. But why did Blood Hunt fail, and why do players like me keep coming back despite there being no new content? Why do I and so many others make videos like this discussing the game that hardly anyone plays but we can't stop? Discussing a battle royale in an overly crowded market, there's already so many. Why has this one grabbed me? Well, why Blood Hunt will inevitably fail is relatively simple to answer, and we'll get to that. But indulge me for a moment and let me tell you why Blood Hunt is such a fun game, despite having one foot in the grave. He's below me. Oh nice. Gonna take the crossbow. I'm gonna take the shield if I can. I think he's right below me. Maybe the stairs to the left. Like there. Mm. Oh! Oh, I hit him. Let's go. That never gets old. When I first wrote the script for this video, I broke down each key element of the game that I loved. I wanted to talk about gunplay, movement, the core mechanics. But then I realised that it was the sum of all these parts, not the individual elements that made me love Blood Hunt. It was mechanical cohesion. And that all started with the factions. Unlike most battle royales, Blood Hunt is class based. There are numerous vampire factions in the game, and while these factions run and shoot the same, they each have unique faction and class abilities that change how you play, and critically, make the movement and gunplay of the game feel incredible. Let's take my favourite example, the Nosferatu clan. This clan has two members, 
Saboteur for the connoisseur of gameplay like me, and then Prowler for those of you who enjoy being player two in your duos team. Both of these characters share the same movement ability, Vanish, where you quickly become invisible and move faster for a set period, letting you get in and out of combat quickly or reposition a third party. This move is incredible. It's fun, simple to understand, but most importantly, it further emphasises the key parts of Blood Hunt, the movement and gunplay. Movement in Blood Hunt is effortless. You run, jump and slide in a fluid fashion. The simplest of traversal mechanics, but they make you feel great. In the climbing, it's Spider-Man-esque. But again, it's mechanical cohesion. Because yes, running feels good and so does climbing, but it's the combination of them all. Running over the rooftops of Prague and effortlessly gliding from building to building without breaking step before falling to the ground below and catching yourself in a slide, maintaining your momentum. Oh, and you can do all of this while shooting, leading to some high skill ceiling fights focused around player traversal, almost a fighting game of feints, dashes and counters. None of this is groundbreaking, none of this will surprise you, none of this will stand out from the crowd. But my message here is that it all feels fun, it's effortless, it's an enjoyable set of gameplay mechanics. It's about making you, the player, feel good with each action. It makes you ooze confidence as you nail down the simplest of free-flowing movements. No game since Mirror's Edge has made me feel this way. This movement, as I mentioned with the Nosferatu clan, really is further emphasised by the well-defined and simple to pick up vampire classes. Classes that add to the traversal, making it feel better and better. But it's not just the Nosferatu, it's littered across the classes of Blood Hunt. The Torridor are just as cool. Their movement ability, Projection Dash. This one is a doozy. This faction can send a projection of themselves at a set range in any direction, and then with the click of a button, teleport to it. So if you mistime your jump between buildings, no problem. Projection dash forward and teleport to it. Simple. But why I love this class is outplay potential. If you're being hunted and need a quick escape, send your projection one way and run the other. The chasing player has to decide, do they hightail it after you and try and gun you down? Or do they guard your projection, anticipating your teleport to it? You can of course use this projection to reposition mid-fight, or even enter a fight from a strange angle. It's again abilities that add to the layer and depth of a simple movement system. It's once again adding joy upon joy, bettering the foundations of the game. This is the DNA of Blood Hunt in my eyes. It's well done systems, none of them groundbreaking, but created with care and polish. Each incredibly functional, yes, but each adding to the last, creating exponential improvement throughout the game. I've referred to this as mechanical cohesion, but a simpler way to describe it would be, it's a game that feels good to play, even if it's simply another battle royale. But if you'll indulge me for just a few more moments, there are still elements of this game you need to hear about. Yes, gunplay is good, I could talk about it, especially the crossbow, which is a weapon of culture, of course. But it's more than this, it's the tweaks and changes to the genre that stick with me alongside the game's movement. Blood Hunt is the first battle royale I've played where it felt detrimental to stand still. Unlike PUBG, where a known strategy for middle aged gamers like me is hiding in a house, Blood Hunt rewarded me for moving. It layered in mechanic after mechanic that encouraged, almost forced me to move around the map. To stand still in Blood Hunt is simply to not have fun. Let's start with the Blood Resonance system. You see, Prague is littered with NPCs, each of which has a different blood type. And each of these blood types gives you, the player, a benefit. The pink NPCs increase your health regen, the orange increase your melee damage, and the teal and purple lower different ability cooldowns. You can stack each blood type three times, meaning you're constantly moving around the city trying to find the next blood type you need. And while you're doing that, so is everyone else, forcing you into scuffles. There's of course the need to go out and find weapons and armour, 
all of which put the citizens of Prague on edge. And should you be spotted feasting on an NPC or kill one accidentally, you'll have your position revealed to the entire map. You'll become blood hunted. Then there's these NPC guard areas, numerous armed combatants guarding chests containing high tier loot, an audible beacon for anyone in the area. Combine this with the ever moving traditional battle royale zone and you don't just sit still in blood hunt, you're driven to move by these systems. But further still, because the game is all about movement, you can be engaged on from any direction. Meaning sitting still is often to your own detriment. These mechanics required me to engage in the game's traversal system. They pushed me to use my vampiric powers, forced me into fights in open spaces I'd normally avoid. To put it simply, it made the game feel more alive. Players weren't driving around in cars, hopping into the safest house. They were jumping from rooftop to rooftop looking for NPCs to feast on, chests to open, guards to fight, and players to tangle with. Everything came together and made you move. Mechanical cohesion. But it can't be all good, right? I mean, the game's developer stopped supporting it after one year. And on PC, it only has around 700 players at the moment. And yes, it's on console, but even then, this is a small player number. Ultimately, it's another battle royale, and while the vampire system is interesting, it's still the same game you've played before. It's not different enough from the offerings we've all played. It's an incredible palate cleanser, or for people like me who never really got into Fortnite, it's a refreshing change from PUBG. By the end of the day, it suffers from a problem that a lot of live service games are plagued by. It's chasing the trend without standing out on its own. The setting is cool, the movement is amazing. The powers are fun, but is it really different enough to stand out from a juggernaut like Fortnite, Apex, Call of Duty? No, no it's not. Is the battle royale genre really big enough to house multiple of these games? Well, executives from all around the world continue to think so. But time and time again, they've been proven wrong. Radical Heights, The Darwin Project, a favourite of mine, Hyperscape, and even Realm Royale. All victims of chasing the trend. All victims of trying to jump into the hype wave, but not knowing where that wave would take them. Blood Hunt is a 7 out of 10 video game, and I'm a firm believer that 7 out of 10 is a good game. But with such a stacked competitive roster to go toe to toe with, Blood Hunt never became the destination of the Battle Royale crowd. It was simply a side quest most gamers went on. A side quest that, for the majority, wasn't worth revisiting. Blood Hunt will eventually die. As a fan of the game, it's hard to say that. But, forgetting that for a moment, I am here for its mini revival. I am here for this final push the community is giving it. One more night of Blood Hunt is all I need. While this game didn't get many fans, I think those of us who it did capture Years from now, we'll tell you about the underrated battle royale that didn't make it. Hell, you'll probably see that video on this channel. With all that said and done, I'm off for one more round of Blood Hunt. I'll see you next time.